This is Zach with PRP Seats. Today, we're gonna to show you how to install our seats into a Polaris Razor 200. We made a special edition seat just for this vehicle that is fully customizable with over 60 different colors and materials. It includes all our suspension components to make it a really comfortable seat, just in a smaller size for your young adult riders. We've also created a specific adapter bracket for this vehicle and these seats that still maintains the use of the slider. So let's get started. Installation is the same on both the driver and passenger side. The driver side is just a little bit tighter because the steering wheel kind of gets in the way. So first step is gonna be to remove the stock seat. Start by sliding the seat all the way forward and you're gonna remove the two bolts that hold the sliders down to the vehicle. For this, you're gonna use a 10 mil socket and we highly recommend using a long extension on this. Then you just gonna need to slide the seat back a little bit to the two clips in front, release, and then pull it out. Take your stock seat and flip it upside down so you can see the sliders underneath. Remove these four nuts using a 15 millimeter socket. Then take them off. Then you're gonna remove these two bolts and then slide the sliders all the way up and remove these two bolts with a six millimeter Allen. Once that's done, take off the two sliding mechanisms and take off these four washers underneath and then you can set your stock seat aside. Next up, grab your PRP seat adapter mount for the Razor 200. We're gonna start installing the seat onto this and the slider mechanisms onto this. But before we start doing that, just know that you can have this seat bracket oriented a few different directions to make the seat either sit down lower with the tabs down, sit up higher with the tabs up like this. And as well, you see this bracket here that's farther away from the back and this one's real short up close to the front. If you have the bracket oriented this way, the seat is gonna slide back almost, almost flush with the back panel back here, which is good if you have a bigger rider and want more leg room and the ability for the seat to slide back farther. Or if you flip it around this way, where this large section is up front, the seat is gonna be able to slide farther forward. Say if you have a smaller rider with shorter legs and they need to reach the pedals. Our recommendation is to have it like this, where the seat is as low as possible and it's able to slide as far back as it can. Once you figure out what orientation you want this bracket to be at, we're gonna start installing the sliders onto the bottom of it. In your hardware kit, you're gonna find four clip nuts. You're gonna install these so the nut side is sitting on top of your bracket, just like that. And you're gonna put these over all four of these holes. They can be kind of hard to get on there, so recommend just using a hammer just to pound them in to get them flush over that hole. After you've done that, we're gonna install both sliders on the bottom side of that bracket. Just make sure you take those spacers, put them in between, then put the slider on. When you're putting the sliders on, just make sure you have them going the right orientation. So obviously this one's always gonna slide out towards the front. So make sure you have that going towards the front of your seat. Then just reinsert that stock bolt with the Allen head on it into the slider, through the washer and into our bracket. Then tighten it down with a six millimeter Allen head. Mm -hmm. 
As you can see, when you get these hand tight, you actually have a little bit of wiggle room so you can move it sideways on here. When you put these back in the car, you need these to be all the way out as far as possible. And then when you put these back on, whoops, you need these to be all the way to the outside as well. So these two bolt holes are exactly nine inches apart. So pull the slider all the way to the outside, then tighten down both sides. Then do the same on the other side. Same thing, make sure the handle is going towards the front of where you want your seat to be. Same thing, get these both hand tight and then push it all the way to the outside so it has a little bit of wiggle room to the outside and then tighten it down all the way. Next up, you're gonna reinstall these two brackets on there, just making sure that this hole at the back where that bolt is gonna go through is towards the back of the seat. Thread all four of these stock nuts back onto these bolts on the slider. Once you have all these nuts hand tight, just like on the bottom sliders, you're gonna have that little bit of wiggle room on here that you're gonna to wanna to push these all the way to the outside. Otherwise, this bolt hole right here isn't really gonna line up inside the car. So push that to the outside and then tighten it all the way down. Then we're gonna take our PRP seat for the Razor 200, line up those tabs on all four corners once again, just make sure that release handle is towards the front of the seat. Then go into the hardware kit we supplied and you're gonna find all these 3 8 bolts, washers, and nuts to connect those tabs on the bracket to the seat. These are usually pretty tight to get in here, especially if you're trying to get the seat as low as possible because it's gonna to start to rub up against the lacing. So start with the front, get both bolts hand tight and threaded, then do the rear get everything connected before you go around and tighten everything down. That nut is a pretty tight fit up against this slider. So I usually just get the bolt in there first and just get it flush with that mount. Kind of real quickly put the washer on it. And then you just have to kind of jam the nut up in there to get it flush and tight. Once you've done the front, go on and do the back. Once you have everything installed and hand tight, it's all on there, you're gonna use a 9 16 socket and 9 16 wrench to tighten it all down. One thing to note, depending on your seat, you may have a little bit of play up here, a little bit of gap in between the two tabs. So what you wanna do is Get this one about halfway tight. Get this one about halfway tight. That way they're even and you're not sucking up on one side and not the other. Get them evenly tight on both sides. The next step is probably gonna be the most important that's really gonna determine if your install is easy or if it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. You need to measure these two bolt holes to make sure they are exactly nine inches apart, center to center. Most likely what's happening is those four clip nuts aren't perfectly centered on the mount where they need to be. So you just need to use a hammer to tap them a little bit farther over. You don't wanna do this when everything's really tightened down though, because it can damage or mess up the sliders and they won't slide as easy. So loosen and undo the stock brackets and slider, tap them over, and retighten everything down. Make sure that you're pulling those brackets out wide, just like you did before, so that you can get those bolt holes to be lined up at exactly nine inches. Otherwise, when you put the seat into the car, if they're not lined up, they're not gonna work with that bolt hole that's already in the car. Once you have these set to exactly nine inches, you can install the seat in the car. 
Once you get the seat in, you need to get those two front brackets lined up with the kind of slots they have in the bracket for the seat. So move it around a bunch and then make sure in the back that those two bolt holes are lined up with the vehicle and the bracket. Then you're gonna reinstall those two stock bolts with a 10 millimeter socket. A couple things to know, it's with our seat being a little bit bigger, it's pretty tight back here and it's hard to get in here. So my best advice is if you can fit your arm around here and get those bolts at least seated, or at least kind of get them hand tight and get them started, do it that way. The only good way to access these with a wrench is either from the side, if you're doing the first seat and this spot is still open, or from the back. So when you're doing the second seat, the pretty much the only way you can really access it is from the back behind the cage. Once those are tightened down, you can slide the seat back to the right adjustment for your young adult rider. And that's it. If you have any questions or issues that pop up, feel free to contact your local authorized dealer, or you can contact us at prpseats.com.